All right, we will bring the meeting to order. Start with the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I think uh, with Craig being here, I'm going to try to help manage this a little bit. Um, so we will seek approval for the consent agenda. It's not working. So I have a question on that. So I know when we talked about this concrete, we had the $18,000 bill. Did something go wrong? Hey, hold on just a second, guys. Sure. You're in the tax rate hearing, which is at 6 o'clock. Oh. So we have to do like 15 minutes. I added these items on your agenda so we could get them cleaned up because we've done that on occasion. So we're in tax rate hearing. So I'm going to go to Matt to lay up. Sure. Give you that information. And usually we wait 15 minutes to anybody who would want to come in and have any comment about that. So for our new board members, Matt is our municipal advisor, and I'm going to. Oh, Matt, I got to get a hold of him. He is talking my phone. I got Craig on my phone. So how am I going to call him and tell him to go catch him? Amy. Can hear you. Perfect. Can you hear me? Yep, we got you in the stereo. All right. So Matt's just going to give us some overview of our tax levy and kind of what's happening with our assessed valuation and how that affects our rate. And so he'll give you some information and I'll chime in when necessary. Matt, it's you. You're with the board and they can all see your big giant head on the screen. <laughs> all right. All right. Hello everyone, um, just kind of a rundown of the tax rate very quickly. Um, every year we go through this process, we um, submit all the information we get from the county to the state auditor's office. There's a formula that uh, the tax rate goes through every year. It is, um, has two, um, things that it's trying to accomplish. A, it's trying to make sure schools remain revenue neutral so they have the uh, funds to operate their school. And B, it's also trying to make sure that schools do not receive a windfall. Um, so for example, uh, last year, two years ago, a lot of schools were seeing the effects of uh, COVID and and the increase in housing values and the increase of car buying and the appreciation of new co used cars and so when we went through the formula uh, many districts uh, were limited to the type of increase uh, that they could have because of that and many had to roll back their levies uh, in order to stay within those parameters um, so in your situation this year, um, what the formula takes a look at is what the assessed value was for last year. And it's only looking at, you know, the same value for last year, the same properties, I should say, for last year. So that house on Smith Street, what was it valued at last year and what is it valued at this year? And so the total assessed value um, for last year was 59546872 This year, that same property is valued at 58805902 So there's a difference there of, you know, somewhere around $700,000 
lower this year than last year. So when you run that through the formula, um, the levy will increase since there's a $700,000 decrease. So the funds remain revenue neutral. And for example, on the, the uh, tax rate notice, it shows uh, new revenue from reassessment being negative $13. And that's with the increase um, of the levy going up to $2.96 um, versus the uh, levy from last year of, of $293. Um, so in order to, to remain revenue neutral, you're seeing that increase. Um, Total assessed value this year is going to come in at 59 million eight. Uh, there's about a million dollars in uh, new assessments, new construction, that type of stuff that has never been taxed before on the books. And um, so that are generate uh, about $30,000 in, in new revenue. Um, so that's kind of what you're looking at. Um, from a top-down view uh, of the formula and your assessments and how it has affected your levy. Any questions from the board or anything you guys want to know more about? We got Matt here. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. No, I was just trying to follow the numbers on the 2024 because we had 59, 840, 242. Um, I thought he said something different, so I may have just looked at that incorrectly. That's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Matt, they're looking at uh, total AV. Yeah. On our no list estimated tax year. That, that includes the new construction, doesn't it? Where it's it does. It yeah, it's total, total, total AV, correct. So you, you've got. New construction was almost a million. A million, right. Yeah. So that's why you're seeing that. Our AV actually went down based on the old stuff that was always around. Our assessed valuation has gone down. But because we had some new construction, it looks like the same number almost. So that actually helped us. <coughs> but it also highlights the importance. I don't know, Matt, you might, might want to chime in on this. The importance of our assessors going out and doing accurate assessment assessments and keeping up with those because if they don't well then we see we can see things like this matt did you have an opinion or anything on that um i mean it's 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 definitely a mixed bag throughout the state what what we see um i've seen five and seven percent growth in personal property in some counties and for example you guys are in morgan down six percent in personal property and down um almost six percent in monotop um so it, it varies county by county what what some of the things we're seeing and they are um elected officials, I have to say. Yeah, and that's why I'm pointing it out to you is that it's important, you know, that these assessments come back accurately. And sometimes Matt and I have kind of discussed this, it's difficult to understand how it figures into the whole. But it, I, I would give you this analogy, I don't know if it's the best one, but he had a church with 100 people in it. And you have your church, and you say, hey, we need tithes and offerings to pay the electric bill, pay the pastor, make sure the lights stay on, buy the communion for Sunday, all those bills. You have 100 people in the church, and the pastor goes up and says, hey, we need this much to make this happen and help us support the church. And then 100 people are there, and all of a sudden, 20 people drop off. You're asking then 80 people to help pay for the same bills the church has, and the bills have gone up. In this way, if you look at it as assessed valuation, we have less less value. We're asking for more and less money that we can tax. Does that make sense? 
There's less to draw from. So if the assessed valuation match, make sure I'm right on this now, if it would go up to say the 60, 70 million, we wouldn't necessarily have to tax as much because we'd have more property to pull from. The rate would be lower. Or could be. Yes, and, and this is, you know, painting with a broad brush, but you can think of it as a teeter totter. So, what the formula is saying, the taxpayers in the middle of the teeter totter. And so, their tax bill, their assessment uh, goes down on one side. Uh, the levy goes up on the other side, but the what the rate or the check that they're writing to the county is still the same because you know one's offsetting the other. As you can see, you know on that notice, you it's a negative thirteen dollars. Now, you know again that's averaging over the county. Not everybody's going to have the same average, obviously. So when we're talking about assessed valuation, we're talking about a combination of real estate and personal property? Yes. Correct. And, and our tax rate is based on the estimated, um, cur well, 2024 tax year, correct? Yes. Can you, can you walk us through the numbers again? Because I'm seeing an increase when I do the math. I'm confused with what we're talking about here. I'm seeing a 59, 840, 242 for this year. And the prior year, 59, 546, 872, which is an increase. Yeah. So that, that's where I'm a little confused. No, you're 100% you're correct. What the formula looks at is, remember, the they're, they're comparing last year's assessments to this year's assessments. So that 59 million, um, 840, 242 number that you're looking at includes a million uh, dollars, a little over a million dollars in new construction, new assessments that have never been taxed before. So the formula deducts those items so it can compare last year's assessments to this year's um, assessments, apples to apples. So that's why you see a difference in the dollar amount. And that million dollars, that's all just Kind of an estimate as well essentially of new construction no no mm -hmm. we're getting that from the three county assessors that hand that okay. to us okay yeah. so we did have some things built that makes sense any other questions for matt no Greg, any questions? No, I've got it. And this is the maximum allowable operating money that we can do. Is that correct, Matt? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. The, I don't know if they've seen the forms or anyone has happened to look at the forms. There's a maximum levy on your, your forms of $3.50. <clears throat> The only way that you can get to that number is through this formula. Like, you know, last year being 293, this year being 296. Um, it's just that process that can get you to the $3.50 max. That's not something the board can say, you know, we want to give teachers raises, so we want to bump our, our levy up to, um, you know, three and a quarter or to the max of 350. Uh, it's just a yeah, and I think formula understand. process. Yeah, and I think everybody understands the only way we can get any kind of a levy increase for operating is what we did back uh, last April, which did not pass to have a voter approved levy increase for operating or for teacher salaries or something like that. Okay. All right, Matt, thanks for the help with the bond language. Appreciate you. And if there's no other questions, I will cut him loose and let him go back. To meet him. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. All right. Okay.
I believe that we have a 15 minute break, not break, but a period that we wait, and which has just run. You did it. So we you are, did it. We are through that period. You're right 15 minutes and you don't have anything yeah. here. Right. So um, I think that we're kind of now back into the consent agenda. Um, you had a question? <coughs> yeah, so when we first talked about the concrete, we were given that first bill that was for like $18,000. And now I see the second bill. Did so, I mean, was there a reason for the second bill? Craig has that information. You there, Craig? Yeah, there's a second invoice for like, I don't have it directly in front of me, 7,300 maybe, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, as I was up here looking over the price, uh, there's another 41 by 14 section that, that when they went to hammer out with a hammer was going to go to the wayside. So luckily Bo um, had his daughter up there shooting baskets. Luckily he came out to said, hey, what do you want to do here? He said, as well, it's my opinion. If we're going to fix it, let's fix it. So we made the executive decision to carry out another 41 by 14 and carry on with what needed to be done. About 600 square feet. Where the area that was going to be um, repaired, it, it was there, there was all these other repairs that needed to be like adjacent to it. Gotcha. That's so, in the circle drive? Yeah, it was in the circle drive. And then, um, you know, he had the uh, is it Bryce? Is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they were up there well, getting ready to kind of go through the whole one. So. I just I agree with confused that. because we just, yeah. that works. You know, anytime you get into a remodel, it's probably something you put on the facilities plan is, you know, obviously the school district can't afford to just redo the whole circle drive in one shot. So if you do it in thirds, or maybe one year you get lucky and do it in halves or whatever would be great. But I mean, you, you can't continuously put a band-aid on everything. So I think there's some, you know, whenever, when Terry asked everybody, when Dr. Rob asked everybody about the facilities plan, I think everybody needs to take a long, hard look and, and see what needs to be done. It's just not the building. I mean, we got, you know, we've got an issue over in between us and St. Andrews that needs to be fixed. We've got an issue between us and St. Andrews and the city that needs to be fixed. And luckily, David went and talked to the city. But still, at some point, we're going to have to address these situations. And whenever you address them, it, I mean, it's always going to cost money. No matter what you do, it's always going to cost money. And the longer you let it go, the more it's going to cost. So, I think it's just food for thought that, you know, I know everybody drives around town, takes a family on a walk or a bike ride, you know, cruise by the school. You know, you might see something that, that I don't see, that Dr. Rob didn't see, that Bo didn't see, that the community didn't see. I saw one reason why that is so bad right there or that culvert pipe that you and I discussed that one day, why it is uh, breaking off and the asphalt was breaking up so bad. There was a garbage truck came out of that and he turned and ran off through part of that. So, I mean, they're just unintentionally making it a lot worse until we get, and the city right. has, has agreed that, that they will do the approach if we do the sidewalk and whether we, whether we need to split that up with St. Andrews or I think, I think that's fair David but I think I too. and I know I'm on speaker and I know I'm probably being recorded and that's fine but I think what's fair is you know everybody needs to understand that that is not a public street that's district owned property I think they were assuming that we would handle the street coming between the two schools and then they would do the approach back to the right. sidewalk. But, you know, I mean, what's assumed? 
I mean, I think we all know what a stoom is. I mean, I think we, we can also argue that St. Andrews assumes that we're going to maintain that parking lot. Yeah, that's another question. And, you know, we, it's, and I understand we've got to be good neighbors, but, you know, what's some of that help me help you? They said anything about. I knew it was mentioned in the last meeting about trying to fix the ramp. Was there anything I've been by there in a couple of weeks? Did anything happen there or? Did the new construction ever come? Oh no. It, I did take a, a phone call with him, okay. and he is going to try to get to it. He told me to take care of it. Okay. That's the last I got. From that was what in the last week or so. Bryce. Yeah. Because I kind of thought where well, they were going to try to do something, and that did. Yeah, I thought yeah. something on that ramp was included in the 18,000. Greg, did you have, was Bryce going to work on the ramp as well, or do you know? Well, I told Bryce to let it go because you told me you talked to Aaron. Aaron was going to address it. Yeah, I haven't heard from him in about a week. I can give him a call back. That needs to be sealed up around those poles because all it's going to do is just get drastically worse every winter because snow and water down in there and freezing and thawing and it's just going to bust out the concrete so yeah I can remember the call guys so I think we get a hold of Aaron Moon and see what his plan of attack is what his plan of action is and then we'll go from there but did that 18,000 include them working on that ramp I can sure ask I don't I mean if it was looking at I mean I don't know. I don't, I don't know what Bryce even thought to bid it in. I have no idea, but you're looking at some vertical patches about all you can do. We, Derek and I stopped and looked at it the other day, and uh, I don't know that vertical patches is going to do it because some of that's broke out right where the steps go down uh, to walk down to the elementary. Well, right, where you're talking about, there's nothing that can be done there unless you want to tear it out. Yeah, I'm looking at, and I don't know what it, I mean, Terry, Dr. Rob could look up what he charges to put it in there, but you're looking at several hundred thousand dollars. I mean, you're maybe not a hundred thousand, but I mean, you're looking at several thousand dollars. Well, I don't think the whole thing's got to be tore out. I just think the upper walls that come up, I think you could cut the rails off, have a plate put on, do it the right way this time. Refloor the walls and reattach the rails by tap cons in the top of it. No, you still you're still not gonna fix the I mean you're still gonna have a moisture problem. Well if you don't if you're not putting I mean the, the problem that it's splitting out is that they put the piping in for the rails, they poured the concrete around them and they didn't seal the top. So water got in around the piping and just like everybody knows, it froze and popped the edges. So what you're gonna to have to do is put the, the walls back up and then just attach onto it on top of it with just tap cons or some kind of bolt down, you know, so there's no giant hole for water to set and freeze. And that'll cure the solution of it, you know, trying to crack around the pipes when there's not a hole for the water to sit in. Well, I mean, I understand what you're saying, Derek, but the damage is already done. Oh, I know. I mean, you're, the only way to fix it is to cut, cut them, jack the walls out and start the actual wall that the pipe's set in, not the whole ramp and everything. Well, when you, when you take down a wall, when you're taking down a ramp, it's all tied together. Now, I, haven't, I wasn't there when it was poured, so I don't know how they poured it. I mean, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying, but the problem we face now is the damage is already done. And I mean, do you, I mean, I guess, what do you do? I mean, you're back again, do you put a bandaid on it? Do you? 
do you tear down and fix it right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I know that what I do know is the damage is already done and you're not you're not just gonna be able to put a band-aid on it and think it's gonna fix it. Yeah, it could get pricey. Yeah, I'll give Aaron room a call. Is there anything else you guys want to do on that? Um, not on that, but I don't think we ever actually saw the estimate. Like Amanda was asking about the eighteen thousand. If it we talked about that being part of it, the ramp and then we're paying it. So was it ever in the, because the invoice is very um, broad. I mean, it just says how many square feet or whatever. It doesn't say like where they worked or what they did. Yeah, I went back to June, I couldn't find it. It's, I was trying to find it back there. I didn't see it either. I, I don't have well, I was, I was like, it was through the last meeting, not June. Well, I mean, I went back through just in oh. case. I couldn't remember when it was done, so we talked about it. I was like, Craig to correct and, saying though that it really was an inclusion in uh, the bid to repair that because we were going to go back on Aaron Moon and see if we could get anything done with him before we jumped in and but I feel like the first quote that was brought to us by Craig had both said, sections being repaired plus some work on the ramp which is why we went ahead and proved it so we could get done before school and it was under a certain amount to prove. And then our problem was going to talk there. Right. Well, I mean, I don't have a problem reaching out to Price and have a vertical patch it, but just so, just so the Board of Education, Dr. Rob, and the whole community understands that vertical patch isn't curing the problem. It's still going to flake off. Hey, Craig, I think, oh. I, think what, um, oh. I think what they're saying is that they, when we talked about the original bid, they were thinking that of what was quoted, some work was already being done there on the ramp. So they're, they're, they're asking about the $18,000 um, originally agreed upon bid and wondering why it's still that high if they didn't do any work on the ramp. This is kind of what they're actually talking about. Right, and I, I never seen from Bryce an itemized, and I think that's what Ash is getting at, an itemized S or an itemized bill or an estimate but I like I said I can reach out to Bryce and have you know I can say hey go patch it you know but I guarantee you I mean it's, it's going to be like anybody else he, he's not going to stand behind it it might flake off in a month well I can tell you what it's going to when it's going to pop it's going to pop when it gets cold and that's just the that's just the nature of mother nature. I think you get more one, in cold air, cold air and wind. It's it's gonna bust. I don't think we're necessarily saying we want him to go and patch it. We're just wanting to see an itemized bill to see if it was included in the original estimate. So we sure. like to see it. I mean, the estimate I mean, and right. the bill. Yeah, I mean, um, that would be what I would recommend is, you know, seeing what was proposed proposed first and then comparing that to what this invoice says. Um, I don't know, do we, you don't have a copy of that, Dr. Rob? Your copy? Is there a way you can get that, Craig, and get that in front of the board? Sure, I mean, I, I can reach out to Bryce and say, hey, what did, you know, break it down, give me a bit, you know, itemize it out. Yeah. What you what you think your cost on the ramp was going to be? Was it a thousand, twenty five hundred? What was it? No, I think I think what they're wanting to see is um, the itemized bid originally, the one that we we thought um, before we approved that we approved to do just the work in general, because I think there was an assumption made that they thought um, the ramp was included as a part of that. So right. just so we yeah. can compare what he originally told us and the amount he was originally gonna bill us for that to what he's now billing us for for the work that he actually did. Right, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay, we can put that on the next agenda if you guys. What I'm hearing you guys say is you wanna know, we got these bills, was there one more thing he was supposed to do? Are we was that in the quote? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the way we thought is, 
he was going to do the work, and that was included in the money that we are paying him, obviously. So, so you want to withhold all the payments until you know that last piece is done. Since it's not itemized, there's no way to tell. Got it. Okay. So if I understand uh, the way this should work, and I may be wrong, um, I'm not sure. I don't believe that we would need any sort of motion on the consent agenda at all, since this is the only item that's included in it. And I believe that we could probably move into. into I got and I got the consent there, guys, just to because I thought there might be a couple more things if there was something. And that's what we'll do. We'll move into uh, new business. And first, we have the huddle agreement. This comes up about every year. And since we're kind of getting into our seasons and stuff, uh, Mr. Carver Hall forwarded this to me and had it reviewed. Um, reviewed it with, let me see what he wrote for you there from uh, Coach Culpepper. Um, and what they're proposing to do. I think this is similar to what we've done in the past. But since it's a three year contract, and it's about $9,000 a year. 9900 Yeah, expensive. Um, Huddle is the system they use to analyze. It used to be a long time ago, they used to trade tapes. So you trade a videotape, somebody at Cole Camp, you meet them halfway, and coaches were out running the roads. And I guess they got mileage for that at one point. It was the old school way of scouting other teams. I'll give you a tape of my team, you give me a tape of yours. and people traded tapes around. Now it's all online. It's all centralized. Um, you, can, you can watch all the plays and analyze it of another football team, know what you're going against. Probably keeps kids a little safer. Um, and our, um, our boosters are paying for, I understand, half of that. Uh, but we'd be in a three-year agreement with them. Does this include um, our streaming that we do through YouTube? I oh. thought it did. Yes. 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 Yeah. Which is a huge. And it does stat track too. Yeah, which and is. There's a huge an ability to sell digital tickets, kind of like Misha does too. Well, Misha kind of wants that. Yeah, they require it. Yeah, it does your live streaming. That's what I thought. And it includes your private set, it includes the cameras and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Because I think Shelly already wrote the check for this year for the booster card. The booster club pays half. Yes. And we pay the remaining half of the 9900 right so, And then whatever football is paying for gets billed to them separately, or is that included yes. in this? That's, that's not included, included in this. That's but fine. that's not included in the 99. Well, they're get, I believe they're getting something a little extra that goes with football. Okay. So it costs them a little extra. I've got, got a question. Sir? I want to be sure I heard Amanda correctly. And I heard Ashley, and I do, I've been on the board long enough that Booster Club has graciously paid for half. And I guess this is probably more, I just wanted to be sure I heard Amanda correctly. It's more of a question for you, Dr. Rob. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got a student activity account, correct? Yes. So, so out of this virtually $5,000 a year, that's going to cost us. Is, is girls basketball, boys basketball, football chiming in on this too? Not that I'm aware of, Craig. So, so we're talking about a selected, a selected, uh, how do I want to word it? A selected population of our school is utilizing huddle. Correct. Those that play football, basketball, baseball, softball, volleyball, volleyball, so, volleyball, what, whatever the extra mm -hmm. Yes. Is. So I mean, I think it'd be fair to say that I think these pro these extracurriculars ought to be chiming, ought to be helping out. <coughs> Is there several of, I mean, I shouldn't say, our community is very gracious in, in giving. And it seems like we're always asking for donations for this and that, whatever the org organization may be. But I mean, I, I think, I think it's fair to ask that 
these extracurriculars that are using huddle but but if that's what they want they need to fund it do we uh, this is kind of along the same lines uh but and i'm not sure since i'm usually there but do we use huddle for for um, School like music programs, graduation. <laughs> yeah, I, I can answer for that one. Yeah, so I like I'll watch that sometimes. Oh, I get. I, I guess I'll, I'm behind the camera. Yeah, we do. So um, you can watch graduation music and all those things online also. And then sometimes they'll go Facebook Live so you can see more of a in person view and also. But because that one's just a widespread of it. It is nice the huddle camera because it'll tell you the score of the thing at home also for the games and everything, which I appreciate as a sometimes doesn't want to go to school to watch a game that I live like half a mile away from. Hey Bo, or Dr. Robbie, the one is is Jason or Mr. Carl Hall there? What's your thoughts on it? No. They're not here tonight. Carl Carl Hall is coaching and I think Jason. Football practice is over at 5.30, so. I don't know. Youth football coaching. If you don't want to pass it tonight, guys, we can throw it onto the next agenda. I put it up here just so. Okay, what do you think? You said it's a three-year commitment? Yeah, it is. We have a choice, right? To get a lower price. The mission requires us to have it. If, we're gonna, if you're going to host right. a pro season game, you have to have that so they can stream their game onto Misha's TV. They tap into that huddle camera. So it's not so the, a lower So you got to have it to their game on Misha's TV, and Misha TV is going to charge you $10. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get a lot of things. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're getting a locked-in price, Craig, for three years with no increase. That's one reason why. How much why. did it increase from last year to this year? Do we know that? I'd have to look that up, actually. I don't know. And I think, I think though that we could probably approve if that you could, there could be a discussion on if you want to try to um, have different groups help fund it. But we could approve the agreement tonight if we all agree that it's necessary, which it seems to be used by every sport along with you know really any sort of activity we have at the school. That's in those in that facility basically. In, including times when, you know, basketball games are, you know, canceled and <laughs> me and my daughter are up there at the school being streamed. On I heard a lot of people watch that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shot but the $9,900 is paid annually over the course. It's not the 27 or whatever right now. No, no, it's a year. So we're probably going to say yes every year to keep it. Because what's our other option? Because the requires it. It allows, you know, folks that don't want to be, or maybe they're not feeling well to see their kids or grandkids kids play. Distant viewers. Yeah. Distant viewers, people that are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. My brother, my brother watched all the time from his son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, relatives that live outside the. We can sell little tickets too. As you know, we can do that. Which would mean what? Like what makes people who's going to view it? Buy a ticket. Yep. Oh, Buy a subscription. Not what I understand I don't know how it works, but it's right here on the contract. So there, yeah, other there, tickets. There are some schools that do that, but um, it is kind of nice to just say, hey, this, yeah. you know, it helps promote what we're doing here at the school and maybe we'll be able to easily see the things that we're doing, yeah, especially I when think that's yeah. nice that we offer. Any motions out there for this? Yes, no? I make a motion. We'll move forward with the huddle agreement. Second. Second. For three years. Three years. Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, is, this, is this what the other organizations have been with this expense or not? Say it one more time, Craig. I guess that this was, is this what the bank, with all the other organizations helping with this, or, meaning football, girls basketball, boys basketball, volleyball, baseball, softball? We can we can take uh, 
that from the board if you guys want us to assess them a fee based on their support we can do that or participation and come up with a formula on it if you want to see that happen and make a motion for us to develop that we can do it yeah except well, i'm just i'm just asking because it's only fair well am, am i wrong here no. it, it, it's okay to disagree it's, i mean we're talking about fifteen thousand dollars over three years roughly I, I, this motion, I, I think that it would be a separate motion and a separate decision to be made. I think this motion is just to get the software to, you know, just in general. How you pay for it can be a different, I think, probably a different discussion than yeah. that. And that comes out of the activities account, right? Their SA, they'd be their fundraisers, their individual fundraisers. So the kids that are raising funds, they could pay it from there. No, I mean, right. Currently, before we, before that call, oh, probably has come out of activities account, right? Yeah. So I think what we could do is this. I think um, we had a vote. Craig, did you vote? And this is just to enter into the agreement. Um, I think I was going to get your vote on this since you're on the phone. You, you got you got a motion and a second, yes. So it has to come to vote, yes. Yeah, they they all raised their hand. I was just going to check what, if your hand was raised, and I just couldn't see it. Well, you can't see it, but I'll vote yes. Okay, so that would be a 7-0 uh, vote. And I think um, here would be, um, I guess, a chance to talk about how you wanted to fund the 5000 If you, if someone wants to make a motion on how to do that. Well, I, I mean, I'll entertain the motion. I'm, I'm going to make a motion that if we're going to have huddle, like I alluded to before, you're talking about a select... I shouldn't say a select few, but you're talking about a certain group of individuals, of students that the district has, that this is available to. And I understand Bridges' point, well, we have music and we have graduation, but let's get real people. The reason it's out there is for sports. I mean, I don't think it's unfair to ask each sport to pay 500 bucks. I mean. No, it's it's not unfair. Especially when. We better see what they have in their accounts. I just. I mean, it's just matter they, they, it's better what they have in their account. If, if they're going to utilize Huddle, then they need to pay for it. This Huddle agreement, is it is this like a January through December agreement or an August through the end of July? No. Mm -hmm. October. Oh, August 14th. No. Contract start date was 8 14 to 9 9 27. Yeah. So I think it would be fair to ask that each head coach, you know, you're looking at basically 15 grand over three years. What you guys are responsible for X amount of dollars. Because I don't know if the rest of the board looks at student activity accounts, but I sure do. And there's more than enough there to cover the huddle expense. Man, it may have to be prorated a little bit because football's only going to have five home games or whatever versus 15 basketball or eight volleyball. So it may take a little figuring. But yeah, I mean, but I don't think you view it like that. But like, the, I, if I'm right and I could be wrong, I think like football, they, because we have huddle, they're able to see every single game in the entire universe and see stats and you can watch every single detailed play and I assume it works that way with every sport. So it's not just the home game that you don't have to watch it. It's correct. Well, it's I mean, you're, you're, right. you're right, Ashley, but you're, you're paying for convenience. It's like anything up. Convenience cost. You know, so students doesn't have one of his assistant coaches drive to, let's say, Kabul to scout two teams. He can just get on huddle. Well, he can get on huddle, and I'm, I'm just pointing out football because we're in a three-year event, and the school's paying for it. Were we it's, kind of like, it's kind of like what Dr. Rob said earlier. You know, he used to exchange tapes, and somebody went and scouted. Now it's all digital. It's all about convenience. And I just, I mean, I have a hard time 
I, I, I mean, I, I truly believe that football, any sport or extracurricular that's going to use it should have to help pay for it. It's only fair. And it doesn't matter if you have five games or, or 25 games. But I don't think we should assess the full value against them. Well, that's one reason that's for graduation. Well, that's what what, what's your, what's your reasoning? Well, we, you know, if we assess, say there's five teams that use it, you know, that's five grand a piece each year, or a grand a piece each year. Well, we use it for graduation, Roxanne said, yes, I, music program. I mean, junior high games are on there too. So, I mean, I think a lower number and the school, the board, or the, the school covers the rest as, you know, I'm not going to say patronage, but help for there are teams and we take care of them. And we do. So just, I'm understanding you correctly. It's okay for XYZ to raise $20,000 in whatever sales and another, and another organization raise 1500 and we're going to ask them to pay the same amount. Well, you just said that earlier, it doesn't matter on how many games they have, we do a, a blanket fee, you know, because of the exception of they have more perks than just home or away games. I'm saying if it's going to cost us five grand a year, if we ask the teams to pay, say, like you said earlier, $500, and then the school covers. And the school does make money off of home games. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's not like it's not benefiting the school any. We get to use it for graduation, for music programs. You know, we ought to kick in some for sure. It shouldn't all fall on just the sports teams. And the that's the other well, piece I mean, that we think. I think the board needs to sit back and realize what kind of money is being generated off from every from every uh, extracurricular. I mean, you guys need to sit back and think. Huh? I mean, how much do you guys donate to? What do you mean? Like I mean, exactly, exactly what I said. Like, like, you I mean, mean you guys donate to, let's say, the Tipton Cardinal football golf tournament. Do you guys donate to the Tipton Lady Cardinal raffle? Do you guys donate to the Tipton Lady Cardinal softball raffle? I mean, you got to, you, you know, you guys got to realize that the community is nickel and dime to death. And that's why we should give something back to the community and let them watch their games and we help support it. But once again, we're talking about a champagne taste on a beer budget. It's I want, I want, I want, but we don't want to help fund it. How long have we used COVID? It's been a while, right? Since COVID. How do other schools pay for it? You know? 10 years. Yeah. Really, 10 years. But the webcam thing. Me, it did because I was coaching cheer at the time, and so I know that at that time I was the cheer coach. Twenty nineteen, it had we just had added, and I know going into the twenty twenty season, we had it then. So I know that they could watch from home then because um, people would pick make fun of me because I was in the stands. <laughs> So, and that's the piece I don't want to get lost here. I think there's obviously some benefits to coaches. Um, we talk about like the convenience piece of that, but there's a huge benefit to the community. You know, that, yeah, so that I don't, I just, that part of it I think is part of the decision on whether or not we pay for all of this. Or, and you look at the booster club, they're coming in and, and paying for half of that. I assume part of that is to say that we're, you know, supporting supporting our athletic teams. They've paid for half of it for the last two years, too. I mean, I know I go to other huddle cameras from other districts and watch it when the when teams travel, when our team travels. I appreciate that. So you have those other, you know, other schools that are tapping in to our huddle camera. Like, I will tap into Stover's or Cole Cam's when we were going there and so I could, so I could watch when our team was traveling. So not that was very helpful for a person that did want to travel also. So, I mean, I'm not just using ours, I'm using other schools. I 
I think at this point, what I would say is that there is, we would just, in order to, I don't know, for lack of a better word, assess um, uh, organization or charge organization or part an activity, then we just have to have a motion on that we want to move forward with doing that. So if someone wants to make that, um, I guess now would be the time unless we have more discussion. I mean, I really don't even think you need a motion to divvy it out. We haven't done it. If you want us to develop a formula and have you guys look at it and approve it one way or the other, we can do that. And I'll work with the ADs. And it would be nice to have them here so we can visit with them too about it. Oh, that's okay. About their use. And well, I don't think, I mean, I'm just tired of, I mean, I get sick and tired of being sick and tired, kind of like everyone else, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, you can't, it, it's that whole champagne taste on a beer budget. Everybody acts like the school's got all this money, but, I mean, you got to watch what you're doing. And 15 grand over three years doesn't sound like much. You know? Uh, 15 grand, I'm sure there's seven people on the board, I'm sure you can think of a hundred different ways to spend 15 grand over three years, besides huddle. Am I right or wrong? I mean, I think we have, we do have a lot, I mean, we do have needs everywhere. <coughs> um, it just every, all the needs I think you just value and try to figure out that, that they're worth the money. I think, I, I like having huddle, I think it's a good benefit for not only the community, but for the coaches. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't like it, no. No, but what I'm saying is we're in the, we're in the business for education, <laughs> correct? I mean, you agree? Yep. We're, 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 we're not in the business for a YouTube channel to show Tipton girls basketball or, or Tipton football. Again, it's convenience. I mean, on that same concept, then, are we going to charge each team to use the multi-purpose building if it passes? I mean, it's... I mean, I mean it's like this, Derek. It's that old saying, if, if it's a bus for candy and nuts, it'd be Christmas all year round. I'm just saying it's it's an important tool for each team, and it is for the teams, plus it's also for the community, you know, I, I'm just going to use first guy come across my head. If Jack and Nip's at home sick, he can sit and watch the football game. You know, and I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. It, but I, it is it's it's a convenient way to watch a ball game, right? I yes, it. correct. And now that I know about it, I'll be watching away volleyball games if I can't make them. I think it's a great idea, and I just don't think the full cost should go on each team. I think it, you know, like we said, a cost and then the school covers the rest. I mean, we're already getting lucky enough that Booster Club's gotten it in half. Um, I don't think we should push it on the teams for the full amount. I need a reduced amount and call it good, and it's the cost of doing business. Well, I'll politely disagree on that, but. Fair enough. I mean, that, that's your opinion versus mine, but.
So this would go into uh, old business, maybe? new business, really. Yeah. And it'd be good to have um, some of those folks here. We kind of, they can talk about that piece of it. I guess we want to make a decision there on how to divvy up some of the costs that we can. We've already approved the agreement, so that's done. So, right. Um, if there's no discussion, any further discussion on that, we'll kind of move into the tax rate levy. Everyone heard what Matt had to say. We've got a recommendation uh, in front of us, I think, that everyone uh, can see. Um, certainly can discuss that recommendation if you want. If not, we can make a motion to move forward. Like it says here, we we need to keep as much money coming in. I mean, we don't need to reduce anything. So, I would make a motion that we approve a total tax levy at four point oh five oh five, which two point nine six seven one placed in the operating levy, and one point oh eight three four placed in the debt service for the twenty four twenty five school year. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, we got a second from Kelly. All in favor? Craig, are you voting yes for that or no? Uh, well, you can't see my hand, but yes, I'm voting yes. <laughs> yes. That was the joke earlier. Yeah, so okay, I mean, that's a 7 0 vote. I don't believe we have any sort of uh, executive session tonight. That's still true. That's true. So we would we just need food to pick up on the way out if you want it. We, we would just need a motion to adjourn. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What uh, what was the catastrophe Tuesday on the bus getting all the children on late? I can talk to you about that after we do okay. this. Okay. This that's I was going to bring it up, but I does, either it's got to be put on next month. And it involves some students too because they, they, we don't do that in public. Right. So, so if, it, if it's students or faculty, it's got to be a closed session. It's not on the agenda, it's got to be next meeting. If you got concern or like some of you guys fired off a check at text chain, like if you guys got questions, either call me or call Terry, Dr. Rob, or we'll, we'll try to answer. But we can't. It's got to be on the agenda, or if it's, or if it's students or faculty, it's got to be in closed session. All right, so we did have a motion by somebody. I can't even remember. Amanda and then the second by Kelly. Sorry, Amanda. Okay. And you had your hand raised, so I think that means we are adjourned. Is that correct? Get the gavel.